Hi. Welcome to Drinking the Kool-Aid. Welcome. I'm Megan. I'm Hannah. And we're done with the Pee-wee story. I'm so freaking happy about it. Yay. You guys, like, <laughs> first, it was so bad, but every time we recorded the freaking Pee-wee stories, I would get, like, the worst heartburn. Like, every five seconds I was over here, like, coughing because of it. She got the peewee and burn. And Megan said that to me, and I was like, don't ever, <laughs> ever say that again. Yeah. <laughs> Do not like it. Yeah. <laughs> but I did indeed, yeah, for some reason, the whole time we were talking about him, I kept getting the worst freaking heartburn. It has to be peewee burn. Oh, my God. I mean, if that's not, I don't know what is. <sighs> yeah. All right. Fine. <laughs> but this one better not give me no heartburn. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I would love to say it's lighthearted, but uh, clearly I don't know what I'm talking about with that. Yes, indeed. I think when they're older stories, then I'm like, oh, it's so lighthearted. But no, uh, okay. Not typically. It's not because there's eyeballs involved. No! <laughs> I mean, I'm excited, but I'm also like, no, because, like, eyeballs. Yeah. Wait, do we have to hear about eyeballs popping out? Yeah. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay. This is going to be interesting. Yes. Megan so. says I'm going to have a lot to say about this one, so I'm very intrigued. Well, I just figured this would be one where you'd, like, have a lot to chime in about, uh... This is, you've probably heard it, the story of Christine and Leia Papin. I don't recognize that, no. You will, probably. Um, I will say that the last name of the girls is pronounced several different ways, but I heard this one the most, and it's easiest for me to say, so I'm going with it. Perfect. Bam. <laughs> also, I will probably say... Every name in this wrong, I had pulled up, like, one of those little things where you can type in the name and she says it back to you. And Hannah Still and wasn't I... getting there? Uh-huh. Oh, was I involved in this? Yeah, well, we were in the car and I kept going, Genevieve. Oh, oh that's right! Genevieve. <laughs> so I was practicing. This is... This is this one? Okay. Yeah. She just didn't know what it was for. Yeah. No, I did not. <laughs> Uh, yeah, apparently, like, the name that we would say as Genevieve is Genevieve. You see, I was making fun of her because she can't stop saying it fancy. I think it's because <laughs> I was trying to say it exactly like they were online, so now everything I say just comes out with a funky accent. I don't know where it's I'm from. I'm okay with it. No, I'm I'm fine with it. <laughs> okay. In fact, I might just be entertained by it. Probably. <laughs> All right, so uh, Christine Papin was born March 8th, 1905, and Leah Papin was born September 15th, 1911. The sisters were raised in Le Mans, France, and they became, well, they didn't become, huh, they came from a troubled family. <laughs> okay. Okay. Before the girls were born, it was rumored that their mother was having an affair with her employer. Uh-oh. Yeah. After she got pregnant, she married Gustave in October 1901, and their first daughter, Amelia, was born. Gustave felt that his wife was still having an affair, so he found a new job in another city, and he announced, Hey, we're moving. And wait, like with her? Yeah. Oh, she came. Okay. So he just figured he was if like, he takes her out of the situation, all is good. Yes. It won't happen again. I'll take you away from that affair. Cool. Now, uh, this one is spelled where it looks like it would be Clements, but online it says Clumance. <laughs> oh, Clumance. <laughs> so, Clumance got <laughs> all dramatic and said she would just rather die than leave. <laughs> Oh, and okay. I mean... I, as you can imagine, this didn't help the marriage very much. So, Gustav began drinking quite heavily. When Christine was born, her mother wasn't able to take care of her, and Christine was given to her paternal aunt and uncle. When Leah was born, 
she was given to her maternal uncle. They were like, we just cannot handle oh, so these kids. Just giving them all away. Goodbye. Well, they kept the first one. Right. Oh, okay. Just so, just one gets kept. Yes. Peace the rest out. Yes. Amelia was the only child that the parents uh, decided to keep in the home. And in 1912, when she was nine or ten years old, it was alleged that her father, Gustav, had raped her. No! Yes. While her mother believed that Amelia seduced him, which, uh, uh uh-uh, you cannot do that. I was... mm. Uh, first off, she's a child, Mm -mm. so let's not go down that road, uh, but... And if that's not, like, the hardest core victim blaming right there. Right. Well, and then she decided to send her daughter away to a Catholic orphanage, and it was definitely a punishment because this specific place was well known for their brutality and discipline. God, what is with them, like, literally just piecing out of every bad situation? Right? Soon after Amelia was sent to the orphanage, Christine was sent there as well, and they ended up building a pretty tight relationship. In 1918, Amelia entered a convent, and she cut ties with her family, which, good for her. She ended up living the rest of her life there. Christine also wanted to become a nun, but her mother forbid this and made her get a job instead. What the hell? So, from everything that I could find, basically, Christine's mom wanted her daughters to support her financially. Oh. And since she had been trained so well in household duties, she became a live-in maid. So, basically, she was, like, pissed. That Amelia was able to get herself into the convent. She was like, I'm not letting any of my other daughters do that. That's ridiculous. Yes. Christine was a hard worker and a good cook, but she could be a little insubordinate at times. Her sister Leia was quiet, introverted, and obedient. Christine and Leia were both maids for several families, but they preferred to work together whenever possible. Their mom made them change employers many times because the wages were just never good enough for her. I hate that the mom is just forcing them to do this shit. Right, and she constantly wanted more money. Of course. In 1926, Christine got a live-in maid position at 6 Rue Brouillé, and that was for the Lancelin family. It was actually a surprise that she got this job because one of her previous employers had warned the family about her. Christine had caused them trouble and refused to do some of the jobs, but the Lancelin family decided to just give it a shot. Yeah. Now, Renee Lancelin was a retired solicitor, and his wife, Leonie, and their daughter, Genevieve, all lived in the home. <laughs> it's going to get me every time. Uh, oh, man. They had an older daughter as well, but she was no longer living at the house. Christine worked really hard for the family, and she was able to convince them to hire her sister, Leia, as well. The Papine sisters didn't go on dates or seemed to have many hobbies. Most of the local maids that were in town would go out together but the sisters weren't really part of that. Christine and Leia typically worked 12 to 14-hour days, and they were only allowed one half day off per week to attend church, which, oh my gosh. I can't imagine just having, like, a half day off, and it's not even to yourself. It's to go to church. Yeah, you're literally forced to, like, you you don't get a chance to just sit there and, like, stare at a freaking wall or something. You literally have to do something constantly. Yeah. Besides attending church, it seemed like the girls didn't really get out much. They didn't have friends, they just had each other, and they were really isolated. People described them as a little creepy or different. They almost had kind of a twin telepathy thing going on and could communicate with each other without talking. I wondered if this was kind of going to go down that road. Yeah. Because it sounds like they're super codependent on each other. They really are. 
They did have one interesting thing that they liked to do, though. They visited a local fortune teller from time to time, and on one of these visits, the fortune teller told them that they had been together in a past life as a man and a woman. So, like, uh, they was lovers. Uh, I, I would know not I feel about this. I would not be pleased if someone told me that uh, uh, that happened with a sibling of mine. Uh, no, thank you. Oh, uh, you made it worse. We was not lovers. <laughs> I can confirm. <laughs> um, but they was. <laughs> <laughs> and from everything I read, it seems like Christine really clung to that and believed it. Ah! Yes. This is creepy. No, this is, this is weird. I don't like that. <laughs> uh, over the entire seven years that the sisters worked for the family, Renee never spoke to them. The orders always came from his wife, Leonie, and she would actually write things down and then give the instructions to Christine. So In seven years? Yeah, and I think that that That's crazy. is, like, even more isolating to live in the house and they don't even speak to you. Right. That's really weird to me. That is very strange. The sisters were given plenty of food, and they had a heated room with a balcony view, which was really abnormal for this time. It was a big deal for a maid to have a heated room. At one point, Leone actually discovered that the girls were sending all of their hard-earned money to their mother, and she was not pleased about this. She made the girls stop sending the money, and the sisters felt that this woman was more of a motherly figure to them than and their, their own mom. mother. Yeah. Yep. Now, I read an article that says Leone actually wrote a letter to their mother telling her, like, hey, the jig is up. The girls are not sending you any more money. This is done. I love that she's jumping in like, this is some bullshit. Right. Things had been going great until Leonie developed depression, and the sisters ended up being kind of her target. Oh, no. She felt that the girls were not completing their work as well as they maybe used to, and they had become kind of um, like, complacent. Oh, I was going to say, like, too comfortable almost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She began focusing on their work, scrutinizing them, and eventually she started assaulting the girls. Oh, yeah. that escalated. All right. Yeah. I don't love that. She liked to perform the white glove test and would go through the house finding any spots oh, of dust. Stop. Yeah, that the girls had missed. But I got to tell you, that reminds me of like Danny Tanner in Full House. Yeah. It, <laughs> yeah, but like. For real, man, I would fail that test a thousand times over. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no way. You would. I would. <laughs> uh, and then she also had a pinching problem. What? Uh, apparently, she would pinch Leia's arms and, like, hold on to her until she no. would drop to her knees and do what she was asked to do. Oh, uh-uh. Uh-uh. Yeah. Mm -mm. Nope, see, pinching is just awful because it's just, you know, it's so, it's so, like, such directed pain. I know, I hate it. And it's it. just, it, ugh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that is just, I know, ridiculous. we always talk about, like, torture and stuff, and I'm like, a pinching yeah, problem. Yeah, no, 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 I hate, I cannot be pinched, yeah. I hate that. Well, Leia didn't like it either. Uh, she was pretty upset about the whole pinching thing, and... She did tell Christine that if it happened again, she planned to defend herself. Well, the abuse got worse, and I did read in, like, one or two articles that uh, Leonie slammed the girls' heads into the walls, but Whoa. that I'm not positive on. Okay. I hope not. I hope not as well. On the evening of Thursday, February 2nd, 1933. Renee was going to meet Leonie and Genevieve for dinner at a family friend's home. <laughs> I tried really hard. <laughs> oh, it man. just comes out that way now. <laughs> Leonie and Genevieve 
had gone <laughs> shopping that day. <laughs> when they arrived home, there weren't any lights on in the house. And this was strange because they had a really big house. There was always lights on. The Papian sisters explained that the power had gone out when Christine plugged in a faulty iron. The iron had caused problems before, and it had actually just come back from the repair shop. Now, how weird is that to say? The iron was sent to a repair shop. <laughs> I mean, really. Weird. No, it is. Like, we would swing by Walmart and pick one up for, I, I don't know, like maybe 20 bucks or yeah. something. But it was a big deal and had to go get repaired. Yeah. That is really strange. Yeah. The repair man couldn't find anything wrong with it, so Christine and Leia had to pay for the repairs. According to the Papine sisters, when they told Leone what happened, she lost her shit and attacked them on the stairs. Holy crap, okay. So the girls tried to defend themselves, but the daughter, Genevieve, joined in the fight as well. Christine hit Leone on the head with a heavy pitcher, and Genevieve attempted to protect her mother by hitting Christine. In return, Christine started attacking Genevieve's eyes and instructed her sister to pluck Leone's eyes out. Ugh. And she did. The freaking way you said to pluck the eyes out? That was plucked. Ugh. Yeah. She took Leone's eyes out with her bare hands. So she just reached on in them sockets and just... She plucked. Hmm? Okay. <laughs> yes. I'm going to try to forget that. Um, well, Christine ran to gather tools for the fight, and the sisters continued to mutilate the bodies of their employers for about 30 minutes. Oh my god. No. Yeah, no, my god, dude. oh my god. They bashed the women's faces in with a hammer, then lifted up their skirts and used knives to <gasps> continuously stab the back of their legs, thighs, and butts. Well, in a lot of the articles, it says buttocks. This escalated so freaking quick. Yeah. Genevieve happened to have her period at this time, so they actually scooped her blood and smeared <gasps> it over the women. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh my god, I'm freaking out. 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 Okay, like, is that not the freaking nasty? I'm freaking out. <laughs> I'm freaking out, man. <laughs> I am freaking out, man. Ugh. That's not where I parked my car. You know what? <laughs> I take it back. I'll 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 remember the um eyeball thing and if I can just erase that part. <laughs> okay. <Yep>. Um <laughs> then Oh god. Christine and Leia went and cleaned themselves up. They were like, "We are done here." After a half hour of literally mutilating people's bodies. Yeah. The sisters didn't flee the scene. They locked and barred all of the doors and went to their room when they were done. No. Yeah. Leone was supposed to meet up with her husband for dinner that night. When she didn't arrive with Genevieve, he decided to go check on them. Rene and his brother-in-law arrived at the house and noticed it was dark and the front door was bolted shut. Renee also noticed that there was just one light on in the whole house, and it was a candlelight in the servants' chamber on the third floor. They thought that's pretty strange, so they went to the police. Oh, wow. Good for them. Right? I agree. <laughs> like, there's a lot of freaky things happening here. Good idea. The police got inside the home, and, of course, it's dark. They have no idea what's happening but they saw something on the stairs. It was an eyeball. I knew it! <laughs> yeah. I knew it! Oh, I can't even imagine walking into a house and seeing a fucking eyeball like on the stairs. Like, just staring <laughs> up at you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ooh. While Genevieve and Leone were in pools of blood and everyone assumed their maids had been murdered as well. I mean, yeah. 
Leonia's eyes were gouged out and they were in her scarf around her neck. What? Yeah. They were placed what? in her scarf. What? Yeah. I know. One of Genevieve's eyes was under her body and the other was the one found on the stairs. The sisters were found in their room, lying in bed, wearing bathrobes and huddled together. I will say there were several articles that stated that they were in bed naked together. I don't think that tidbit is true. I yeah. watched a documentary and it never came up in there. Okay. So, there's that. The room was locked from the inside, so it took police a little bit of time to actually get in. When they opened the door, the girls just looked at them and Christine said, We've been expecting you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's so ominous. I know. There was a bloody hammer in their room that still had hair and brain matter on it. Oh, wow. Okay, so they're just like, yep, we did it. Oh, yeah. They confessed to the whole thing right then oh, and there. Like, all right. no remorse, here it is. And they basically said, well, yeah, it was self-defense because they were just sick of being beat. Oh, yeah, because self-defense takes a whole half hour of bashing people's bodies in and ripping their eyeballs out with their bare fucking hands. Right. <laughs> During the court hearing, the sisters were not able to provide an explanation for what they had done, but they both agreed, you know, it's self-defense. The sisters both attempted to protect each other by taking sole responsibility for the murders. Uh, Christine's like, it was me, and Leah's like, no, I did it all. Medical experts checked for signs of mental illness, but they couldn't find anything. Eventually, experts ruled that the siblings had a condition known as folia da, which is madness of two or shared paranoid disorder, which is a shared psychosis where delusional beliefs can be transferred or shared from one person to another. Whoa. Yeah. Now, this condition has symptoms such as hearing voices, paranoia, inventing fictitious threats, and even unusual sexual behaviors. This typically occurs when two or more individuals live in close proximity, are socially or physically isolated, and have little interaction with others. So basically becoming completely co codependent on each other. That's exactly right. Yeah. And there's a dominant person who forms those delusional beliefs, and then they pass that on. What? Yeah, they pass it to the second person who's known as the acceptor. That's so interesting. Right? I thought so, too. And it's assumed that the second person may have never had these delusions without that dominant person inducing those beliefs. Whoa. I know. Crazy. This is very, very, very interesting to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the lawyer for the Papine sisters pled not guilty by reason of insanity on behalf of the girls. They both demonstrated mental illness, had very limited contact with people during the trial, and often stared straight ahead as if they were in a complete daze. There was mental illness in the family, but again, it was deemed that the girls were just fine. During trial, the Papine family was discussed. Their uncle had taken his own life, and their cousin was living in an asylum. It was believed that Leone's anger had triggered the darker side of the psychosis, and Christine was the dominating one in the relationship. It took the jurors 40 minutes to determine that the girls were guilty. Christine was sentenced to death by guillotine. Leah got a better deal because she got to keep her head. She received... Oh, your face. <laughs> Listen, I tried really hard <laughs> to keep a straight face through that. Yeah. <laughs> she got a better deal because she got to keep her head. I mean, that is a better deal, is it not? Okay, but did she end up dead? 
<laughs> wow. Listen. I'm over here rhyming now. She, no, she received a hard labor sentence of 10 years. What? Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> Christine's sentence was later reduced to life imprisonment, so she got to keep her head, too. Oh, well, that's good. I'm glad, well, I'm, I mean, yeah. I don't really, I, well, I would say I'm glad they kept their heads, but also, like... Yeah. There's some shitty people, so I don't necessarily want to say that I'm glad, but... Right. You know. After the trial, Christine's mental state went downhill pretty fast. Prison officials allowed the sisters to meet once. They say that apparently Christine threw herself at Leia, unbuttoned her blouse, and started yelling things like, please say yes, please say yes. And they believed that indicated, like, an incestuous sexual relationship. Yeah. So, there's lots of rumors okay. with that. Um, it was just getting weird. I mean, but, they were know. married in a past life. Right. Um, apparently, <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. Um, yeah, I guess I didn't even consider the fact that they can't really see each other when they're... Mm-hmm. Yeah, that... Yeah, wow. Yep. I can't imagine that, uh easy on either of their mental health. No, it fucking sucks. I mean, but they kind of suck. So. I know, right? See, you're <laughs> used to the same thing I yeah. do. In July 1933, Christine lost her shit and attempted to gouge her own eyes out. What is it with these girls and eyeballs? They love those eyeballs. I mean, don't get me wrong. I kind of do too. Just saying. If you pluck my eyeballs out, <laughs> I swear to God, no, I will come for you. I will not. Probably. You better not. Uh, she ended up in a straitjacket to stop her from self-harming while she was imprisoned. Christine actually claimed that this rage was the same thing that she felt on the night of the murders. Since she was separated from her sister, she was experiencing horrendous hallucinations she refused to eat, and she died four years later in the spring of 1937. Leia served eight years of her sentence and was released for good behavior. She took on a new identity, got a job at a hotel with her mother, and passed away in 1982 or 2001. Uh, that's a, <laughs> a little bit of a like, bigger difference, but okay. Okay, okay cool. let me explain. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Some accounts say that she died in 1982, but a French film producer, I think his name is Claude Ventura, claims that he found Leia living in a hospice center and the woman had suffered a stroke and was unable to speak and then passed away in 2001. Cloud had been working on a documentary film called In Search of the Papine Sisters. He really genuinely believes this was Leia. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Conspiracy. So that is all I have for you. Nope. I had never heard it. Okay. I mean, well. like I like I said, I'm, I mean, there's a chance, but I just, I've listened to so many freaking stories at this point. Yeah. That I just don't know but i don't ever remember that story and i feel like i would because of the whole eyeball the situation. eyeballs would stick with you yeah I especially agree. like finding one on the stairs i don't yeah. know that just really is gonna stick in my mind so no nope, yeah. never heard that one well i love doing ones that are <laughs> new and interesting yeah no it was definitely interesting <laughs> i'm uh very intrigued now see now i'm gonna have to research that thing you were talking about uh, like about how they were um sharing the same yeah yeah that's just super intriguing to me i know as i was going through the articles because you know it just kind of says it it's like i th i think it was like uh what folia duh or something i don't i don't know how you remembered that but sure uh <laughs> listen the spelling scares me because i was like i don't even know what words these are and i had to keep listening to the lady over and over just say it <laughs> Uh, but then I researched it more. I had to do a deep dive because it's just so I'm about fascinating. To. Yeah, I'm about to do that exact thing because now I'm super intrigued by it. So that's what I'm doing once we're done here. And also, speaking of eyeballs, I mean, Hannah knows because I've said it a thousand times. When I 
uh, was first starting at a company a while back. I was in training and my coworker has a glass eye. And it was one of the coolest things ever. She was, I think, really hesitant about it because a lot of people think it's gross. I do not. So she kept pulling it out for me. And I was like, it's so cool. I loved it. Yeah, I've actually got a friend um, that I see at the bar sometimes that I make him pull out his eye all the time. Yeah. It's really entertaining to me. I don't know. I'm it's weird. fascinating, but I do not want my eyeballs plucked. Right, nor do I. And, like, when it comes to, like, thinking about, like, a needle going into an eyeball or something, yeah. like, I'm out. <laughs> now I'm done. No, thank you. Yep. <laughs> so, um, okay, there you go. Make sure to follow us on any of your podcast apps. Tell us the stories that you want us to tell you. <laughs> uh, if you've got listener stories, email them to uh, drinkingthekoolaid at yahoo.com. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, go to our website, drinkingthekoolaid.com. Give us a five-star review if you love us. Tell your friends, tell your cats. Um, bye. bye.